to go ahead and bring this over to Mary. Hi, Mary, go ahead. Okay, well, thank you, everybody. Um, it's just wonderful to be with you. I've done several webinars for AbleNet and they're archived on the AbleNet website, but it's always exciting for me to get a chance to be with you and um, also to be able to hear um, some of your questions. And I really hope that you'll enjoy the presentation today. Um, I am a retired occupational therapist and worked in the school system for many years. Now that I'm retired, I'm a volunteer at a learning center with adults, there's about 20 of them, with a wide range of special needs. So for instance, autism, Down syndrome, um, learning disabilities. And I've always enjoyed sharing ideas and collaborating with others. When you listen to the webinar, even if you are well-versed in technology, think about how you might be able to use or share these ideas with different populations, and ages. Remember that if you are well-versed in technology, that your clients, coworkers, teachers, or parents might not be and could really use your help. If you would like to try some of these ideas but are not very tech savvy, don't be afraid to ask for help. And that's something that I've always had to, um, to do is to ask for help. I would also like to take the opportunity to thank um, my family for all of their help, and also for Dave, uh, Deb at AbleNet, because I really appreciated her practicing with me and getting ready for today. So for the last um, few years, I've included music as part of um, my classes. And um, after a little while, some of the students said that they would like to be um, part of the music choosing too. And that's where the project idea, I guess you would say, began. I did wanna mention how I appreciate all of you. This has been a very challenging 18 months due to the pandemic. Um, at our center, of course we were in person, um, but up until March uh, of 2020, then we were shut down. We sent out homework packets for about four months so that the students wouldn't lose um, what they had gained. And the packs, packets included, you know, things like um, some of our science things, our literacy things, um, current events, um, but it didn't include music at that time. Then in September of 2020, we began Zoom classes. Then in May, 2021, we did a hybrid of Zoom and in-person. And then in June and July, went to all in person. And right now we're on our uh, typical summer break. So I just wanted to give you a, a little bit of background. So when you see slides that say in person or um, hybrid or things like that, you'll kind of have an idea of what, um, what I'm talking about. Okay. So of course, every project has goals. So we're gonna review that a little bit. And we, we really turned in the love of music into a project and trying to get um, our students very involved. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit how the project began, the description of the project, additional ideas and conclusion. So if we look here at the project goals, um, we wanted to really focus in, to, in on things that would help our special needs students. So ideas of um, choosing a song that they wanted to share, learning something about the groups or performers, learning how to tolerate and appreciate others people and other people's interests, using technology, developing presentation skills, interacting with other students, participating and getting parents involved. So all of these different things we hoped would come out of our love of music and technology. So to get started, um, I mentioned that we did include music as part of our classes before the pandemic. Um, as part of that, um, I asked the students to choose a song and then to become a song leader. So they were gonna be develop, developing some leadership skills, um, providing suggestions, um, 
they could get help from home, staff, and self. And then on the computer, how to search on the computer, again, the technology for finding songs and finding lyrics. So when we look at music as part of classes, and I've always had a, a lifelong love of music and how um, it can be incorporated into just any part of life, um, music class before closing for pandemic. Um, and why I already mentioned that music was not part of the homework packets, mainly because we couldn't quite figure out a way how to, to do that. Um, Zoom classes during the pandemic without music, and Zoom classes during the pandemic with music and in-person classes again with music. So as you can see, there's an awful lot of thinking power that had to happen, not just with the staff, with us, but with our, with our students and our families. So I was really interested because the students were, you know, giving me some feedback when we started Zoom classes as um, I was really interested in, you know, were they really missing music? Um, what could we do about music? So I made up a little survey and emailed it out and asked them, have you been listening to music during the pandemic? What type of music have you been listening to? How does music make you feel? What's the name of your favorite song? And do you want to have music classes using Zoom? So I just really wanted a feel for if music was important to them. And the results certainly showed that the students enjoy listening to music and they found it relaxing and calming. It was very interesting um, to also find out their wide range of tastes in music and that students really wanted to resume music classes. So since they wanted to resume music, that would you know let our project continue, but then also the whole idea of music being important to them. So what kinds of songs were they listening to? Well, um, as you can see, a very wide range, country, pop rock, gospel, musicals, Christian rock, patriotic, folk, Disney, and hard rock. So, this was amazing to me, all these different types of music that the students were listening to and wanted to listen to and share. We talked a little bit about song leaders. And to me, that was really important to develop the idea of leadership with our students. So if they wanted to share a song, they were gonna to have to be able to, in some manner, tell us the name of the song, why they chose it who sings the song. And this has been an evolving uh, type of project also. So besides knowing the singer, the artist, also who wrote the song. And this led us into some very nice discussions about, well, um, there are many people that sing a song, but they aren't the primary people that wrote it. What instruments? And this is something that I really um, wanted to key into as the project evolved because it's really important for the students to get a feel for um, what kinds of things were the hearing or seeing in the song. Then when was your song written? This especially appealed to our science teacher because he really believes in um, practical math. So it was going to be fun to find out um, were they going to be able to tell us, for instance, how many years ago was the song written? And then um, why did other members in the class like the song? You know, did the other member, we were talking about tolerance, which I think is a really wonderful way to bring out in music. Um, why did people like it? So you can see here our smart board and one of our students that um, is, was one of the song leaders and she decided to do a patriotic song and um, anything that you can uh, project onto the smart board, say if you didn't have smart boards available to you, a big screen TV. Because um, really you're, all you're doing is projecting what you have, for instance, on the laptop. And you could probably see that behind the young lady projecting it onto the screen. 
So one of the songs was Keep Your Eye on the Grand Old Flag. And you can see when you search through um, the internet and you have a chance to go to YouTube and other things, it's really great to be able to see how nicely that um, the lyrics appear on the screen and that the students are able to just really key into the words. And our speech therapist was very excited about the idea of all the language that was going to happen with using these songs. I'm going to scroll down here for just a minute because one of our students um, who has low verbal skills decided to do uh, a Beach Boy song. And I don't know if any of you have ever used this little step-by-step -step by AbleNet, but it's really a great device I had used it quite a bit in the school system. And you can record a number of messages onto it. In fact, I believe you have up to four minutes recording time um, and you can record as many responses as you want onto it. So thinking about this young lady who really wanted to be able to share her music, her song with us, this really came in handy. So I'm going to go back up here for just a minute. OK, so um, I, I asked her, um, you know, what what song did you want to share? So she, you know, tapped on the um, tapped on and came out California Girls. OK, I asked her who was the writer singer. She tapped on the next one, Brian Wilson. And OK, when did it come out? She tapped on it, 1965, and said, okay, well, what kind, what kind of song is this? Tapped on it again and pop. And then uh, what kind of instruments do you did you hear or do you think you saw in this? And tapped on it again and guitar, piano, and drums. And the people in the class were so excited that she was part of this and able to be a song leader being able to be in front of people and also to be able to give responses. So this really turned out very nicely. And you can see here the group that she just really loved the, the Beach Boys. And this was fun too, because this um, picture of course projected onto um, the smart board and it was really fun for her to be able to show this to the other students. Okay, so the song leader using the step-by-step. -step. So we recorded answers, as I mentioned, to the questions for the student. And uh, I already described a little bit about activating it. So, you know, just tapping on it was able to bring up one response after the other. And I thought this was just really great. And you can record on it in just, you know, just a very, very short time. So technology, we're talking about technology quite a bit. And for the students to be able to search for song titles and performer information using computers, that was an amazing skill. You know, you, you think about, well, the students do this or that on computers, but to be able to actually look for and use the computer for a particular topic, this was exciting to all of us. Um, at this time, the only um, assistive devices that we really needed to use, and probably you have seen them and use them a lot too, um, are the adapted keyboards. So um, we used a, a large letter uh, keyboard. And then for another student, it was the kind that it has um, the yellow against the black or the black against the yellow for um, easier vision. And then students, had to text me information. So for instance, we'll just um, we'll just say a particular student, okay, so it's gonna be your turn next week. All right, um, I'll need to know the name of your song so that I'll be able to get in, you know, be able to get things ready for you. And so it was really um, a good skill that they and some, and the parents sometimes along with them um, would text the information about the name of the song um, and the group to me using their cell phone. So it was really a fun use of information to get back to me using a cell phone. 
um, mentioned before about student collaboration. I think this is one of the things that I, I love the most. Well, there's a lot in these different projects that I love, but you know, you'll, you may have a student, you might have a client that is just pretty tech savvy and is able to share their skills with somebody else. So you can see that this young lady was helping two other students and what they were doing is um, searching for a song title. So here you've got this beautiful um, way of technology being used with their assignment, with their music. And she was thrilled to be able to use it with her friends, with her other students. And I think that's always so neat when a client or a student is able to share what they know with their classmates. And so you can just imagine how good that this made her feel. In fact, she kept volunteering to help um, any student that needed help, that she was very glad to help them with that. Well, of course, we had to get our staff involved. So um, this young man asked our science teacher for help in finding a song. And this, this was really pretty neat because this young man um, often has a difficult time communicating, dealing with um, other people. And the fact that music and technology were able to bring out one of his interests. In fact, he um, enjoyed doing the project so much that right away he volunteered the next time that it was, you know, that his term would come up that he definitely wanted to be able to um, find a song and do a song again. Now you're probably wondering, why am I showing you a bunch of bubbles? Well, there's a couple reasons. Um, this is our, um, our, our Zooming. And one is because I'm very protective of our students' uh, identities, but also I thought it would be really fun for you to see the number of students that were involved in Zoom. Um, up until this time, I really hadn't used Zoom very much. And so really all of us had to get a crash course in using Zoom, as well as the parents and um, the students. But you know, out of 20, uh, 20 students that are regular in-person students, there were almost always um, 17 to 18 students involved in our Zoom sessions. And one thing I thought that was really neat is that, well, um, not only did the staff become better with this technology, but the students really did a great job learning about Zoom. And the parents um, reported back to us because many of our parents um, weren't working at this time. Um, were able to be involved in these Zoom classes. Although with one thing that was um, really nice is that they might help get the students started on Zoom, but they would kind of hold back so that the students would be sure and be the ones that were definitely involved. But I just loved, you know, reports later that the um, parents got an awful lot out of Zoom. And it was fun for them, um, you know, them seeing this pairing of technology and music. One of the students just loved Bruce Springsteen. And of course, we went ahead and did his um, song choice. And it was fun because it went, as you could tell before, from Patriotic to the Beach Boys to Bruce Springsteen. And that was just a lot of fun for, I think, everybody. And music videos via uh, sharing screen on Zoom. Um, for those people that are all tech savvy, I, I know that you already know that you can find all kinds of music videos, but it was especially fun to be able to, for the other uh, students and parents and us, to be able to find music videos and then being able to share it, share screen um, on Zoom. This reminds me of um, something that lasted for our Zoom sessions. And that is that, um, when I was trying to find, or any of the staff was trying to find something on Zoom, or maybe something didn't go quite right, which often happens in technology, um, I would talk through it with the students, and I'd say, "Okay, now we have to, you know, share the sc share screen." Oops! Oh, wait a minute, the video's gone. We have to try and find the video. Oops! 
forgot about um, doing the sound part of it to share sound. And it was really, um, really interesting that as we did this and talking this out loud with the students, that they really were catching on to it. And there were times that the students would, if something didn't go right, then were saying back to me, oh, you must have forgot the video. You must have forgot to put it on music. I mean, to share music or share screen. So this, this was really wonderful learning for the students. All right, well, when we uh, were able to come back to in-person, the students let me choose a song, which I thought was really nice of them. And you can see that I chose um, Ray Charles and we were able to project this onto our uh, big, well, not the big screen TV, but of course you could onto the smart board. And I chose um, um, America, uh, America the Beautiful and Ray Charles does just this beautiful version of America the Beautiful. And it gave me a chance to talk to the students about that there's different versions of songs and that sometimes you'll have somebody that writes the song, but you'll have many people, different versions of who sings the songs. So that led us into another level of music with technology. Well, who doesn't love Disney? We have several students in the class that really love Disney anything to do with Disney. And so when it came time <clears throat> for their um, song choices, they discovered this ultimate Disney medley on YouTube, who knew? So it was really fun because um, as we kind of searched through this a little bit, this partic particular medley is 29 songs and four and a half minutes. And the students just really love this in particular the two that love Disney and love Disney musicals, thought this was really cool um, that they could hear 29 songs in four and a half minutes. And on here, I'm um, talking again about the ultimate Disney, um, just wanting to kind of re-emphasize that we were able to do it on Zoom. So we had this hybrid for a while um, that I mentioned that we came back in person but then we were able to do our in-person plus Zoom classes. And that was very interesting for the staff to be able to do both. Uh, but as you can see on the side of the screen, um, the students that weren't able to do in-person um, right away and did it by Zoom really appreciate the fact that we were able to, to do both. And it was really interesting to me too about being able to do technology-wise going from you know, uh, talking to the students back to the laptop screen and then back over to um, the big screen TV or the smart board. So we're gonna talk a little bit about some other ideas having to do with um, technology. Um, before I um, get into that though, I just wanted to tell you again that um, some of it um, probably looks like, oh, I'm not gonna be able to do that. Um, I, wouldn't, I would never be able to use it, but I can tell you from firsthand experience that yes, you can. Um, it, but it does take some good intention people to be able to help you work, work, work through some of it. And we talked about you know, students and clients and parents that you have are very willing to help you with technology. And then on the reverse side, you know, um, the parents and teachers are so busy that sometimes if we can just give them some ideas of how to do things, um, something that may be simple to you, but it's just worth a million dollars to them if you're able to share some of your skills. Okay, so we're gonna go into a few things that I think you'll find fun and maybe ideas that you'll be able to share. One is name that song, music challenge. Um, dancing, sign language, the We Sing It game, and iPod. Now these are little um, buzzers that I was able to come across on the internet searching. And we divided, this was in person, this part of it. We haven't quite figured out how to do it this part by Zoom yet, but in person, 
but the technology here is very simple. It's just a simple buzzer and it has different sounds. And um, there's sounds, for instance, that are bong, ding, um, ding dong, honk. And I'm not sure if you can hear this over the over this, but so each one of these devices, there's a set of four, has a different sound to it. So when we divided the students into challenge groups, then each captain got one of the buzzers. And so for instance, um, I said, okay, we're gonna really, you know, we're keen into music. And so I've got a question for everybody. So one of the, for instance, one of the questions would be, um, name a song from Disney that you heard last week. So of course the first team captain that was able to answer that and he could collaborate with, with the fellow students, then they got a point. And it was just really fun because the, we moved the buzzer from person to person. So even though we had team captain, we moved it along so that every person in the group would get a chance to answer. And also it gave again that idea of collaboration and bringing music in in a fun way. The next one is recordable switch buzzers. And again, simple technology that I just found on the internet, um, but you can record on these a single, um, a single message on, on these. So this, this will be kind of fun to use. And I have a, something I used to use in the school system and that was from AbleNet. It was a big, big Mac um, in case you have something like that um, handy. You could record a single message on the Big Mac that I used to use. All right, well, here you see one of our young ladies. And I told you that we try and make things as best as we can student driven. So we came back and it was the day of the big salsa party. Well, we grow our own uh, tomatoes and our own uh, peppers, thanks to our science teacher. And uh, so we had our um, we had our salsa party. Well, after the party, one of the young ladies said to me, um, "Well, I know how to salsa dance." And right away, my brain was going to, "Okay, how do I find um, let's see salsa music on the internet?" And then once they got to find it on YouTube, then I have to be able to bring it up. And she said, no, you don't. I'll just bring up some music on my cell phone. So <laughs> I was making it so difficult, but in a matter of moments, this young lady was able to start salsa dancing and trying to help us learn how to salsa dance in a matter of minutes. So I just loved that it was student driven, that the students really enjoyed this whole um, idea of it. And that this young lady in a matter of moments had solved this technology question. Oh, I'll just bring it up on my cell phone. I thought it was just really, really great and really fun. So in here, um, we, we're we beginning to do some sign language using um, songs. And I'm very interested to see how um, this is going to develop. Um, the idea of being able to learn signs, of course, is really good, but being able to learn signs along with songs and the fact that we were able to, and this was a parent suggestion, um, be able to learn some signs with songs and using Zoom. So here we were pairing um, a parent suggestion with technology and with music. Now, I told you before that I get a lot of suggestions from my children who I appreciate so much. Well, a parent donated this Wii system to us. And I was thinking, how am I ever gonna use this Wii system? Cause I didn't, you know, just really didn't wanna do video games. So I was trying to, think of how am I going to use the SWE system? Well, my uh, son came up with the idea of, he said, mom, you know, they make music games available for the Wii. And so he came up with this idea of sing it. Well, 
this was this was new to me, being able to do singing with a we. And the sing it, um, I really think we just started using it um, before we um, ended for uh, we took our summer break. But this has been really fun to be able to hook up the we. And of course, a lot of the students already knew how to hook up the we. Um, but being, being able to hook up the Wii and then being able to find this game, Sing It. Now with this, um, with this particular game, Sing It game, you have to have a Logitech microphone. So, you know, as you kind of play around with some of this, you have to pay attention to, does it need a particular device to go along with it? So this it was, you know, it said Logitech microphone. Here you have a picture of, and you can probably tell this young lady loves music as much as I do. So I asked for a volunteer and I said, okay, we're gonna try a couple of these Disney songs. And you can see that um, the Wii actually projected it onto the big screen TV. And I said, okay, I need a volunteer to be able to sing along kind of a karaoke idea with um, the sing it with a Disney song. Well, she was first in line. She wanted to be able to try it right away and it, it worked out pretty well. So I'm excited to see as when as we come back to in-person class again, how this is going to work with each of the students saying that they really would like to be able to um, be part of this too. So from the Disney Sing It information, I just thought this would be interesting that with this particular song and again, Remember, I don't work for any of these companies. I just get excited about sharing ideas with people. So um, the sing along to 30 songs and music videos from classic and contemporary Disney favorites. Okay, um, it gives you easy to follow karaoke, karaoke gameplay. So that's pretty cool. And the part that I'm just really wondering how this is all gonna work, play with up to eight players in family fun mode where everyone can sing along or pass the microphone and then sing it encore mode enables players to play back the performances and add fun voice effects. So again, it's, you know, I told you about that. This is constantly evolving. And I think this is going to be really neat to be able to add this whole new element. And I thought, you know, this might be so much fun that um, I'd like to suggest, you know, some of the families to get this. And so, you know, I asked um, my son, well, how much do we cost now, you know, on second hand? And they said, just about $70. So I thought, you know what? Um, a lot of times parents, um, caregivers will ask, um, what can I get somebody for Christmas? Why can I get them for the birthday? And we try and come up with ideas. Well, you know, maybe something like a Wii or maybe some of these uh, sing it things will, will, be, will be great. But what a great suggestion for our, our families and different caregiver, caregivers. iPod. All right, now, I know many, many of you are familiar with the iPod, but again, this was some, an idea that came from one of our parents. Um, we have a, a student that was having a difficult time coming back to in-person classes. And he was very stressed. And one of the parents said, you know what? The next day I'm gonna send him with this iPod and I'll send, the, um, I'll send the earphones along too. And let's just see how that works with him being able to listen to his iPod before the classes actually start. Now, for those of you who don't know, an iPod is a portable electronic device for playing and storing digital audio and video files. So the parent um, downloaded a number of songs that you know his child said that he would like. And the, the student, the child is learning how to download songs. And it worked so well um, before class and during break time that you could really see calming and relaxing. You know, instead of being stressed, um, you know, he put his, um, uh, he put the headphones in and listen to some music. And then in between class time, during break time, he listened to songs again. And it just, 
reminds me, I think, that when things like this happen or you see the joy of pairing music with technology, how really powerful music is, even when you use it in the simplest of ways. And you can find almost anything. Um, I was able to find WikiHow and how to put music on an iPod just searching the internet. And again, you know, if you have a parent or a caregiver, or someone says, well, I won't be able to do that. I don't know how to do that. You'd be able to direct them to the internet. And, you know, again, um, just how do I put music in an iPod? So this is just a fun slide. You know, we talked about before the pandemic and things that we hope to return to um, once things are um, less troublesome. Well, before the pandemic, we were invited to a local Hallmark store and we were able to combine just some simple instruments and um, the students chose songs that they wanted to sing by searching the internet and finding the lyrics. And in this case, even printing out the lyrics to a few simple uh, heroes or songs. And it was a lot of fun. So I put this in there in hopes of being able to do this again. All right, so let's talk a little bit about different skills that were employed or enhanced. Well, fine motor, of course, um, we were able to see the, the signing, um, able to use a number of things using fine motor. Organization, oh my goodness, the chance of being able to organize your thoughts. Decision-making, you know, what, what song am I gonna choose? What song am I gonna be able to share with the class? Collaboration. And what a nice slide that was of the, of the one student being able to collaborate with her classmates. Language, verbal reading, all of these wonderful things that came out, um, being able to do the lyrics and being able to see them on either the smart board or big screen TV, or even um, as, as paper as we did um, at the Hallmark store. Leadership, being able to be the song leader and being able to be in front of the class what an amazing skill that is for our students, our clients. Tolerance to classmate songs. We had one young man that I don't think was uh, really um, ever too interested in anything except hard rock, but he did through time and an amazing job listening to his, class, uh, his classmate songs and being able to appreciate them. Technology, all the technology that we were able to use. So I have conclusions, but I guess I never really look at this as being concluded, but students were able to choose songs to share. They were able to learn about groups or performers. They were able to learn to tolerate, appreciate classmate choices, able to use technology, able to develop presentation skills and, and enhance their language able to interact with other students and able to get parents involved. So I'd like to thank you for being part of the webinar and I really hope that you can take back some of these ideas and use them or enhance them. Okay, I'm gonna go to um, questions and see, let's see, first I think I have to stop share, all right. And then I'm gonna go over here to question and answer. And then uh, Deb said that she would help with this. Okay, so my first question is, um, I'm a music therapist and love to hear other disciplines incorporating music. Um, I recommend taking advantage of working with a music therapist. Yes, um, anytime that you can get more ideas from other disciplines, that is always fantastic. Um, another question was, um, was it difficult to have the students do the sing-along? No, I thought it was going to be, but instead of it being difficult, um, they seemed to be getting right on board, which I thought was just amazing. Okay, um, Deb, do you have any other uh, questions? There, that you're there is uh, something in the chat. Um, oh, Jean is okay. asking if you plan to continue using music. Oh, yes. Um, I really do uh, plan on using um, music 
Um, as you can see, music is just so wonderful to be able to use it and incorporate it. Um, yes, we do plan to continue using it. Let's see. In, let's see, let's see. Oh, there's a, a comment I thought that was really nice too that I see from Charlene. It says um, that sounds empowering for the student with the iPod and gave them locus of control for some time. So I thought, thank you, Charlene. I thought that was really wonderful too. Um, let's see. Oh, was the vir virtual option valuable enough to consider for future use in partnership with in-person programs when that option is available? You know, I yes, I think now that um, we all feel a little bit more um, savvy about in-person and then Zoom plus in-person. Um, yeah, I, I kind of just think that this has opened up the whole world of possibilities. So thank you. Okay, question is, um, have you explored games like Just Dance on the Wii? This would incorporate music and motor planning. We haven't done that, but I really appreciate that suggestion um, because I think that would be a lot of fun. And again, I, you know, like I mentioned, um, just learning about incorporating um, you know, the game, the Sing It game with the Wii, I think that sounds like a great idea. Just Dance on the Wii, I'll have to explore that. So thank you very much for that idea. Okay, I don't see any other questions or chat. Um, so we have just a, a couple couple minutes left here. Um, I guess in term, just to, I guess to you know kind of finish off our, our presentation, I really appreciate the fact that um, you know people listen to the presentation and are already thinking about ideas that we can share with others and ideas that we can do expanding what we have. And yes, it's just really fun for me anytime uh, to be able to incorporate other disciplines, I, like I mentioned about the speech therapist being so excited with the idea of all of the language that happened. I just see all kinds of possibilities happening. So I, I hope that um, all of you are able to stay well. And again, thank you so much for being part of the presentation. Mary, there is one more question. Oh, okay. Um, is asking if you have a particular switch adapted MP3 player that you like to use or something that can hook up to the iPod, such as a big Mac. Um, you know, I really don't. This was kind of the beginnings of, um, you know, learning from the, um, the parent about music with iPods. So I really don't have that just off the top of my head. Oh, um, I did. There's the a plus is something that that you can hook up to an iPad or iDevice, um, and and you can use that with switches as well. Okay, That's thank you, Deb. Sold on AbleNet site. Okay, so the AbleNet website. Okay, thank you, Deb. Um, and there is one comment here. Uh, my student also loved old videos of Richard Simmons sweating to the oldies as part of a gross motor group. Well, that sounds like fun. Yeah, another great idea to be able to incorporate um, music, music and technology. And like I said, I'm constantly learning and I had to, um, I really, like I told you, I really appreciated um, my children and my husband being able to give me um, techie knowledge. And I guess I've just um, gotten over um, of being afraid of asking people for help with technology because I don't think that um, <laughs> I'll ever know as much as um, my, my kids do. Oh, one thing I did forget to mention, because we are going to be getting into um, fall pretty soon, um, which is October and fun. There is a really fun Monster Mash um, video that you can find on YouTube. And it's um, animated and just happened to kind of think about that as a fall thing. I think that you all might have a real good time looking that up. The Monster Mash was an old, oldie but a goodie. And that's, um, you can find that on YouTube. It was a lot of fun. We did that um, last October. All 
All right, I think that concludes our, our webinar for today. Mary, thank you so much for all the great ideas and information. And uh, we will post this webinar out on our YouTube channel for everyone to be able to view at a later time. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.